everyone. I'm Kristen Ciccolini. And I'm Janine Malone. And you're listening to It's Just a Phase. Each week, we'll bring you inspiring and informative conversations about honoring the different cycles of life, covering topics of health and wellness, moon phases, astrology, witchcraft, feminism, and more, so you can superpower your well-being and live your best life. It's week three of summer camp. Do you miss your mom yet? We hope you're getting some rest during our waiting moon week activities. We've got another mini episode for you today, all about the new moon. Get ready to make some friendship bracelets for your intentions. Let's kick it off. I love friendship bracelets. Me too. I really am so bad at making them, but I love it. I used to make them all the time with the letter beads. You know, like make people's names on them. Oh, you were advanced. I used to love going to the craft store and getting beads. Oh, my God. (laughs) And specifically buying beads. Yeah. (laughs) I'm not kidding. I was a weirdo. (laughs) That's not weird at all. I'm, like, jealous. I feel like I used to just, like, buy all the, like, the supplies and never actually use them. Oh which God. I still do. <laughs> did you did you buy GIMP, which is a terrible name? I, I don't is there another name for it? That's the name I knew it by. The like waxy stuff? Yeah. No, I didn't because I like definitely like if I couldn't make a friendship bracelet, I definitely wasn't making those little like cubed keychain things. Oh God, I made so many of those. <laughs> oh my god, I'm so jealous. It's a lot of plastic. Okay, so Kristen anyway. is our arts and craft counselor. <laughs> uh, today just... we're making macaroni necklaces. Yeah, I'll just do like the morning announcements yeah. with the trumpet sounds. <laughs> <laughs> and then be like, good morning, campers. <laughs> Everyone do the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. No. I'm writing a new Pledge of Allegiance. It's Britney, bitch. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> you want a hot body? <laughs> you, want- you want a Maserati? <laughs> <laughs> Go call the governor. <laughs> That's a great Literally song. imagine a camp full of kids <laughs> doing that. <laughs> that would be the best camp ever. Oh my god. All right. Yes. Anyway, cosmic update. It's not a big one this week. It's uh it's all about rest. That's all we want you to do. We yeah. start with the dark moon today, which is just after the tiny sliver of moon disappears and we're kind of in a void for a little while. (laughs) Um, It's a very quiet time that lends itself to rest. And um, start thinking about, does rest scare you? It probably does. Our culture hates rest. We hate not being productive. Or capitalism hates not being productive. We love to rest. Yeah, exactly. I think that think think of all your like ghost stories about resting and what we'll do if you give yourself a break. Like I'm imagining being at camp with like a flashlight under my chin being like, and you'll miss an email from someone. (laughs) Like think about those things. (laughs) And reevaluate, like, is that actually true or are you just scared? Um you know, Leos really love to celebrate themselves as well. So this is a great time to reframe that as well. I think sometimes we think of celebrating ourselves as like being self-centered or egotistical, but it's not necessarily always in a bad way. So pair some of that self-love energy with the new moon when you're planting seeds and setting intentions. You know, what can you really do to love and spoil yourself? also really good for creativity if you feel supported if you feel like you believe in you you'll be amazed at the ideas and follow through that come with it so uh, that feels really good yeah right I'm like great episode over sounds amazing (laughs) (laughs) got it see ya yeah (laughs) so what are you doing to sync up I mean I'm resting you know I'm kind of still taking some time to let my mind wander um you know at the beginning while the moon is still dark and then around you know the later part of the week or over this weekend um Dean and I are planning on doing some intention setting as a family because we have some goals for the next year or so no if you're listening to me we are not planning on having a baby so don't text me don't (laughs) at me mom (laughs) but we do have some other goals um and so we're just planning a little like family summit to solidify and I thought that the new moon in Leo just felt like a really nice time to set intentions together that's a good idea yeah I won't bother you about that (laughs) auntie Kristen (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. So that's what we're doing. What about you? 
I'm still working on my new program, so I can't rest entirely, but this kind of brings up the question that came up in our Q&A episode. If you haven't listened to that, it's episode 10, so go back. Um, but the question was, what happens if your creative cycle doesn't match up with the moon? So that's me right now. Um, so right mm-hmm. now I'm in the growth phase, which corresponds to the full moon. So exact opposite of what's actually happening in the sky. So <laughs> to me, this just tells me to be really mindful about my work time. So containing it within a certain time block during the day and, you know, focusing on my rest and self-care when I'm done and to actually be done when I'm done, you know, turn off the computer, not checking email, you know, ring the bell, like you ring the bell and just like have that signify, like it's done. It's time to rest now. So that balance I know helps me to perform well during the day when I'm trying to focus. So if I'm resting in all the other time of my day outside of work, then that helps me to really, you know, focus and do better at what I'm trying to do. So it's sort of back and forth, but it helps me honor both cycles. I really love that. I think that's so important to like note to people, you know, no matter what's happening in the sky versus your personal life or even just like your menstrual cycle or anything like that, there's always a way to, you know, get a little creative and support the multiple phases that you may be in at a particular time. Yeah. Love that for you. (laughs) Can't wait to see this program. (laughs) Um, So our activities for the week, um, our mind practice is all about setting well-rounded intentions. Doi. Um, This is a really great time to get clear on what you want to accomplish in the next month or so. Um, And, you know, personally, when I think about making setting intentions, sometimes like naturally and because of all of the capitalism I've been force fed my entire life, I like only focus on like intentions that I want to make for work, like work I want to do. And so I like to set one or one to three, I never go over three for three different areas of my life at the new moon so that I'm making sure that like all there's like a well-rounded, you know, version of me being represented. So if I'm setting, or if you're setting intentions for business, I would set intentions for the visionary, for the leader and for the magician. This is something I do in my personal practice that I have on the blog this week um, about, which is essentially like, what do I need to do as a CEO? What do I need to do as a manager? And what do I need to do as like a worker bee, you know, because all of those areas need to be represented in you if you're an entrepreneur. And if you're looking for more like personal, all encompassing intentions, again, just choose three areas of your life to set intentions in. So they can be like work, home and relationships or creativity, self-care and money. Three is a magical, naturally well-balanced number. And it's a nice reminder that there's like multiple facets of you that need to be cared for in each moon cycle. That sounds like, do you remember the circle of life that we did a while back? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a circle of life activity that I do with clients and it's basically like a pie chart of, or not pie chart. I don't know. It's like, it's a circle divided into all these different areas of life and you choose on each section, like how satisfied you are with each of these things in your life. And the wider your circle is, the happier you are. But then it's just a good visual representation of showing you where things might be a little bit lacking. So if you have like no idea what needs to take priority right now, I, I recommend looking up that exercise. I'll put it in the show notes and that can help you really direct your focus. So yeah, absolutely. Love that. Yeah, I remember doing that and being really happy to see it visually because I'm just such a visual person. We love a visual. We love a visual. (laughs) Arts and crafts, vision boards. Um, (laughs) That'll happen at four o'clock. And so for the body, we are, um, your one job here is to rest. So again, I know this is really difficult to do. We don't like to rest. It makes us feel guilty because capitalism has us measuring our worth based on our productivity and our energetic output, but don't feel guilty. Don't feel guilty. Rest is really crucial and taking a break allows you to function better, not just for capitalism, but for your personal life, your relationships, your own interests. It just feels so good to rest. Um, Also, it's really important for your hormone health. So we talked about in episode three, 
on breaking free from the patriarchy that if you're someone with a menstrual menstrual cycle, you don't function optimally trying to be the same person with the same energy every single day. It's just really, it's really important to honor what we need at each phase of our cycle so that we're recovering from stress rather than continually increasing it, increasing our cortisol and throwing off our hormone balance. So your hormones, your period, your mood, your metabolism, your energy will all thank you for your one job of resting. Kick those feet up. Yeah. Grab a tube. Kick off <laughs> your flip flops. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that. I I feel like I needed to hear that message as well. So thank you. You're welcome. Personally. <laughs> <laughs> and our spirit practice this week is to make a new moon board. You guys know I love a visual intention. Um, so visuals can make us feel emotions without having to worry about finding the perfect words. They remind us of feelings that we're chasing rather than outcomes. And I just believe that this leaves a lot of room for co-creation between us and the universe. I don't love to set like super, super strict intentions about like a specific outcome because I think that that can limit us or put blinders on for like other opportunities to get to the same place, but take a different route. Um, so this week notice and start to kind of collect some images or quotes or artwork that really spark something inside of you. The things that when you see them, you're like, yes, same that (laughs) you can all those. If you're about to reshare something to your story with any of those words, maybe create like a saved Instagram folder or create a mood board. Like I do either digitally or literally like go through magazines and make like a collage or a vision board or whatever, or just pick one really impactful image and set it as your phone background. Think of it as a tiny altar to your intentions for the month to keep them just front of mind and feeling represented in a way beyond just like things you think you want. It's really cool to show your brain that there are different representations of that vision. Um, I find that really helpful and really expansive. And it feels like a fun activity, right? Like flip through magazines, go on Pinterest, like look at Instagram with new eyes. Um, so yeah, I love the idea of setting it as your background, like you on your phone or your desktop. Like I said that. So recently, um, I saw an image from Gabby Herstic that all it said was there is no rush. There is no rush. There is no rush. And I was like, Oh, I needed that. (laughs) And that, I mean, that's perfect for this week. I will, I'll link to that on her Instagram, but I said it as my desktop background because I needed that reminder, but you can also like, I love the digital collage idea, especially if you're, if you don't have a bunch of magazines lying around. Right. Um, and yeah, setting that as your desktop background so you can just see it every day. That's a really cool idea. Yeah. It's just a nice, tiny reminder. Like if you're someone who is never going to like make an altar, like think about ways that like altars can be created like in your actual everyday life. Like are you putting things, are you posting things like on your mirror at home? Like do you have like photos and stuff or we all have desktop backgrounds. We all have phone backgrounds. So like be intentional about that. I know people do that with their passwords too. They'll like set their password to a word that they're trying to like create more of so that they're yeah. typing it like a bunch of times a day. Yeah. I've heard that. That's a, that's an interesting idea too. Yeah. Awesome. So if you decide to do any of these practices, definitely show us your mood board on Instagram. You can tag us at it's just a phase pod and use the hashtag just a phase camp and we'd love to see it. We love to see all the things that you do. So if you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, feel free to email us at it's just a phase pod at gmail.com. And next week, we will be back with the final week of summer camp.